experience pure Italian goodness. The real test of Italy. Italian lifestyle, Italian design, Italian culture in London. This is the Italian Factor, and I am Gabriella, your host, joining you in this journey of Made in Italy. Italian style. Quite fashionable. Very chic. Buongiorno. Italian people as being quite friendly, quite outgoing. They have a slower pace of life. Grazie, tutto bene. It is an amazing country. I think Italian food is really uh, uh, easy on the palate. Italians are definitely beautiful, oh for sure. In Italy, before sitting down at the table, we say pancia mia fatica pan, which in English means something like dear stomach, become as big as a hat. Because it's true, really true, that Italians have three passions, women, cars and food. Today I have invited Deborah Parietti, importer of Italian food products and of course food aficionado. Ciao Deborah. Ciao Gabriella. So Deborah, explain to us what is it that you do exactly? I founded a company uh, called the Red Beetle. I travel Italy on my 45 year old Volkswagen car. 45 year old? 45, <laughs> yes. And red of course. And. Um, I look for the most delicious and authentic products and bring them to the UK and sell them online. Great! But how was your passion for food and cuisine born? I, I guess as like many Italian children, I spent a lot of time in the kitchen watching mom and grandma just, you know, cooking all the time. And I guess it started there. So just by baking on Sundays or making fresh pasta and stealing some of it. And um, yeah, that's how it is. So you started. actually know how to prepare those delicious food? I cook a lot, yes. I love cooking. I um, spend a lot of time in the kitchen. But if you had to describe Italian cuisine in few words, in three words? Authentic, tasty and healthy. You know what they say about Italy. Lovely weather, beautiful women and great food. But I'm pretty pale and if I stand in the sun for a second, I burn. As for women, well, uh, I've never met Monica Bellucci, but I would sure love to date her. Although I don't think she'd ever want to date me. So that leaves food. So here are some fun facts about Italian food and wine. The Italian diet is the Mediterranean one, which is based on a daily consumption of fruit, vegetables and pasta, and in moderation, milk and oil, and in even more moderation, fish and meat. It's incredibly good for your health. It helps you live longer, reduces the risk of cancer and heart disease, and even helps you stay in shape. It's no surprise that Italian food has been voted the most popular in Europe, according to research done by the German Tourist Board. Least popular, Swedish food. English food, my food, second to last. Well, I don't know why that is. I hope I'm not bringing down the average of my frozen meals. When I don't even thaw them out, I just sort of lick them like a lolly. It's good. Italy began producing wine back in the 11th century. Today, 1,016 years later, Italy produces 43.3 million hectolitres of wine. That's enough to fill 1,925 Olympic-sized swimming pools. And if swimming pools were actually filled with wine, I'd definitely sign up for swimming lessons. Deborah, Italian cuisine is very well loved, but also badly imitated. Can you tell us about some Italian recipes that have been destroyed by foreign chefs around the world? Well, I have to say it's getting a lot better nowadays, but throughout the travel and experiences all, all over the world, I find that probably chicken parmigiana is the one that... What is chicken parmigiana? Well, I don't know. It's just parmigiana and there's... Um, chicken on top or inside and so I would say to lose the chicken and keep the parmigiana. Because the parmigiana is only done with vegetables. Vegetable, yeah, meat. it's an incredible dish and there's no need to put <laughs> chicken on it. <laughs> there are some very interesting false myths about Italian cuisine, such as pizza with pineapple, which would simply be unthinkable in Italy. Can you share with us the most interesting false myths you have come across? 
Well, again, um, on pizza, I put barbecue sauce, um, yes, or maybe salad next to risotto or pasta or lasagna or again chicken in pasta it seems chicken comes up every every time every time but why do you think it's so hard to find good italian food outside of italy i think the lack of fresh ingredients is probably the biggest reason um Italian cuisine is based on local food and fresh food and seasonal products, which are hard to find when you, you know, were in, you're in America or Australia. But also the lack of a real Italian chef, maybe. <laughs> maybe that's, uh, or even studying in Italy, if you're cooking Italian food, it's very important to immerse yourself in the culture and in the history of the country to fully understand when, where a recipe come from. So it's, um, that's incredibly important. So it doesn't matter where they're from, but at least they should have spent some time learning the ingredients, how, how they balance each other um, in recipes. So let's see if these Londoners are guilty of committing the cuisine crimes that Italians would find, quite frankly, unacceptable. Are you ready? Let's do this. Do Italians drink cappuccino with their meals? False. Uh, I think so, yeah, true. False. True? False. False? False. You never have a cappuccino with a meal. In Italy, it's pretty much illegal to have a cappuccino with a plate of pasta. You can have it for breakfast, but if you do really want one with a meal, make sure you have it after the meal, okay? Don't upset the Italians, all right? In Italy, rice can be eaten as a side dish. I think rice is uh, something that everybody eats. Um, so maybe it's false. True? True? True. Yeah, true. Very false. In fact, it's sacrilege. Italians will pretty much only ever eat rice as a main dish. When Italians are abroad and they serve rice as a side dish, they suffer a mini Italian heart attack. Gino De Campo is the best chef in the world, according to Italians. Campo? Gino De Campo. False. <laughs> no. False. No. False. Although it is true that us Brits do love a bit of Gino De Campo, but the Italians know there is only one person deserving of that title, and that, of course, is Mamma. She is the keeper of culinary traditions that have been handed down from generation to generation. And one bit of advice for you if you're ever with some Italians, Never say a bad thing about their mums. Deborah, you have travelled all over Italy with your Maggiolone. If you had to plan a route for an English person visiting Italy, what would you suggest? I guess that depends on how much time they've got on their hands, um, but I would probably recommend to pick two regions, um, maybe one from the north and one from the south, and really spend some time exploring everything in those regions. So maybe travel to Piemonte and uh, do some hiking on the mountains and maybe some wine tasting with Barolo. And then, you know, eat cheese and hazelnuts and truffles, which are actually in season right now. And then move south and go to Sicily, uh, which is a beautiful island, and really spend some time to embrace the culture and taste the food and get to know people and maybe also experience some festivals in the summertime um, during the harvest. That will be probably my, my recommendation. You mentioned Sicily. So what three words come to mind when describing Sicily? I would say colourful. Um, generous and very proud of everything, traditions and story and culture. L'azienda Gambise è nata dal mio bisnonno nel 1854, cioè abbiamo 162 anni di storia. Il mio motto è sempre quello, l'alimentazione sicura a tavola mangiando mediterraneo perché l'alimentazione mediterranea cura la salute dell'uomo, dell'umanità. Facciamo sempre quei prodotti nostri al 100% mediterranei, quindi mediterranei italiani. Non ci facciamo coinvolgere da certi importatori esteri 
che vogliono prodotti che costano poco e infatti io stesso dico fatele fare in Giappone, in Cina, in Africa. Nei miei prodotti non c'è mai scritto un conservante, un colorante, un additivo chimico. Tutto al naturale. Vuoi bene alla salute, non vuoi malattie. Siamo nati col tonno, il tonno del nostro Mediterraneo. Noi siamo gli ultimi artigiani che facciamo i 33 sapori del tonno. Perché tonno, oca e maiale non si butta niente. Facciamo il prosciutto di tonno, il salame di tonno, le bottarghe. Facciamo le acciughe in olio di oliva, poi c'è la lavorazione del pomodorino ciliegino di pachino, ricchissimo di licopene e carotene, anticancerogeno, antitumorale, aiuta il cuore, ritarda tantissimo l'invecchiamento della pelle. Sono medicine naturali. Experience pure Italian goodness, the real test of Italy. Experience pure Italian goodness, the real test of Italy. Italian food for me is... Amazing. Tasty. Cheesy. Romantic. Full of love. Italian wine is... Uh... Expensive. Chianti. Fruity. Delicious. Pleasure. What is the main difference between ancient cuisine, traditional cuisine and newer style such as American cuisine? Um, well, I guess ancient and traditional, I find they're quite similar and that depends probably, you know, on the simplicity of the ingredients and if like in ancient cuisine or, you know, traditional cuisine, maybe they introduced, um, you know, some slow cooking and roasting across the ages and Then moving on to newer cuisines, it's more fast and, you know, something you do right away and not think about it too much. And so time also is probably biggest, um, a big factor in this, um, in this equation because there was a lot of time to cook in the old days and um, something was probably going for hours, you know, while everyone was working. And nowadays you come home and it has to be ready in a few minutes. Um, so that's probably the biggest difference. We, we're going to make a very simple dish. Uh, we're going to make some fresh spaghetti using flour, double zero flour, uh, fresh eggs. We're going to dress the spaghetti with some lovely botarga and... Uh, so what is uh, botarga? So botarga, botarga is the, the, the salted eggs of fish. Does it make sense to you? So what we have here is 200 grams of double zero flour and I want you to break two eggs inside the flour. No shell in. No shell. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Ivan one, eggs zero. So what you want to do right now is to slice it up. Fold it and put it from the other way. Can you do that? Yeah. They're very fresh, so the humidity will get them uh, stick together. So you're, you're jiggling the spaghetti? Jiggling spaghetti. Tickling like the spaghetti. I like that. Okay. It's the first yeah. time I heard about it. Now what we have to do is to peel the botarga. Okay. Another, another amazing, amazing ingredient for, from South Italy is lemon. Okay. So, Ivan, as the, bo as the water is almost, is almost boiling, yeah. I'm going to start to chop in the fresh herbs. Now we're going to put salt into the water. We can go back to our sauce. We're going to put the spaghetti into okay. our sauce. Fresh herbs, and go with the lemon in. Let me smell it. Oh, the 
smell very good. I think that's about right with the lemon. This tastes good. I did promise you on top some extra botarga. Excellent. Voila, there you have it. This is um, fresh spaghetti made by Ivan with fresh botarga and herbs and lemon. Okay. Let's grab the fork. forks. Okay, there we go. That's really nice. It does taste good. We are now left with cleaning. Yeah. So, uh, how do you want to do that? Well, usually it's the training chef who is going to clean it. So, that's a job for you. Oh, nice to see you. Yeah. yeah all, all the best. Italy is the land of wine, as many will know. Why do you think this is? So, it's not just a wine that is spectacular. It's also the combination with food and pairing with the right uh, recipes and also introducing people in the equation and making sure that there is, you know, food and wine and people and everyone is having a good time. So the whole picture is much better than just, you know, a glass of wine. Which do you think are the most typical Italian wines? Well, Prosecco is quite famous, especially here in the UK, um, Barolo, Chianti, um, Valpolicella, there's so many wines that are famous all over the world. And from Sicily? Um, Nero d'Avola, surely is one of them. Um, Moscato. I valori di Ramadine sono soprattutto il rispetto delle tradizioni, il rispetto delle tecniche con cui si coltivava la terra una volta e queste tecniche sono basate soprattutto sul, sul mancato uso di pesticidi e di, e di concime. I nostri principali vini sono Alamen, che è un passito di noto, che appunto prende il nome dal territorio in cui ci troviamo, cioè da Marzameme. Marzameme che nella lingua araba significa Mars Alamen, significa Baia delle Tortore. Poi c'è il patrono che è un nero d'avola 100%. Poi abbiamo, fra i vini bianchi, abbiamo il Nassa, che si abbina molto bene con i pesci. La eh, collocazione di questo territorio è più a sud di Tunis, quindi abbiamo una forte insolazione che conferisce ai prodotti eh, un'ottima maturazione. Sotto lo strato argilloso che viene coltivato vi è uno strato anche di natura vulcanica che conferisce all'uva e poi quindi ai, ai vini, ai nostri vini, una particolare eh, sapidità, una particolare salinità che si somma a quella della salsedine del mare. Per cui tutti questi fattori contribuiscono a determinare, a produrre dei vini che sono eh, molto aromatici. I premi che qui in Gran Bretagna sono stati attribuiti ai nostri vini sono stati assegnati dal concorso internazionale Italian Wine Challenge e sono stati attribuiti al nostro Alamen, cioè al Passito di Noto, la medaglia d'oro e il, eh, il premio Italian Sweet Trophy. We are still in Sicily. I know that one of your favorite wines is from the region and I know that you brought it. Um, yes, Gabriella, I brought a bottle with me. Um, it's a Passito from Sicily. If you have to describe it in simple terms, perhaps to someone who doesn't know much about wine, what would you say? I would probably try to make a connection with something they are aware of. Um, in this case, I would try to make them think of apricots and honey and figs. Um, in this way, they probably can find certain flavors in the pasito and, um, and remember for the next time they're drinking it. Giuseppe, thank you so much for, uh, for letting us join you. Um, first up, tell us exactly what it is that, that you do. We are import and distributor of uh, food and wine mm. from, coming from Sicily. Sicily is very full of product which make the things for us more difficult. Mm. Because when you have such a, a big variety, it's not easy to select the right one. Mm. If you want, if you agree with this, I can tell you what can we do to taste the wine in the proper way. The first step of all is, of course, have a look at the wine, okay? And it's important that 
behind the glass there is a let's say a clear surface a white surface why this because we can see exactly how the light penetrate the wine yeah let's so you've get got a... a piece of paper right <laughs> <laughs> okay and we put the wine like this you see you can talk about the color and you okay. can talk about uh, how bright is it okay looking at the on the glass then we have the sniff what kind of smell you, you hear here tell me it's not a, it's not a soft wine it's not i, I feel like exactly. it's not necessarily a fruity Let's say that now is the time to have a sip. I I got um I got like black currants or blackberries. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yes. Yes. Actually. Yes. How long does the wine still in your mouth? Still there. Still there. Yeah. That means that it's a good wine. So let's uh, let's cheers on it. Yeah. Cheers. Let's Thank have another you very sip. much. Yeah. Deborah, we are coming to the end of the episode. Our guests are usually British and we make them say an Italian tongue twister. This time you are Italian, so we still do a tongue twister with you, but we will ask you to say it very quickly. Are you ready? Of course. <laughs> okay, so we begin. Repeat after me this tongue twister and then of course I will say it in English too. Caro Conte, chi ti canta, tanto canta che ti incanta. Caro Conte, chi ti canta, canta tanto che ti incanta. Very good. <laughs> and the, the, the translation is, dear Count, he who sings to you, sings so much, he enchants you. <laughs> very well, Deborah, because you, you could repeat it very, very fast. Thank you. And uh, we have one last thing to ask you. Generally speaking, what do you think the Italian factor is? I believe the Italian factor is um, our how we constantly aim for perfection and um, how that affects everything we, we do, whether it's art or um, fashion, design, architecture, literature. Um, we constantly strive to get the best possible result and we're very stubborn, so it means that we won't stop until we get there. Thank you, Deborah, for being with us. And uh, as for us, there is still a lot of Made in Italy to discover. See you soon. Ciao. Caro Conte, chi ti canta tanto, canta che ti canta. Now it's your turn. Caro Conte, chi te canta tanto. Caro Conte, chi ti canto, canta tanto. Cargo Conte, chi tai. Canta tanto, caro conti chiti. Canta, canta. <laughs> canta chi. Canta che. Canta chi. Ti. Ti. Canta che. Ti canta. Canta che. Ti incanta. Ti canta. Ti canta. Ti canta. Experience pure Italian goodness, the real test of Italy.